welcome to Speaking of Jazz with Manny Kellogg and in association with jazztribe.news. Now let's get started. Well, jazz lovers, once again, I'm coming to you saying hello, 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 and I want to thank you so much for tuning in and listening to Speaking of Jazz with Manny Kellogg, and that's me. I'm your host. I'm bringing it to you live from from the hip every week. This week is uh, such a great honor to have a lady that I have been trying to track down and get on the show for a long time. She has such a busy, busy schedule. She finally has some time to give to uh, Speaking of Jazz. She's a lady that her, her voice is a part of her soul. And uh, I don't want to get in her way. Uh, before I jump into uh, Ms. Sharon Clark, I would like to thank Music Matters with uh, Daryl Craig Harris, Las Vegas, who is our producer. And Nigel J. Farmer from Southwest France, who uh, is the publisher and also producer. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and jump into it and say, hello, Miss Sharon Clark. How you doing? I'm good, Manny. How are you? I'm fantastic. And I'm so honored to have you uh, part of the uh, Speaking of Jazz show. And I'm just honored. My heart is is, is jumping here because it's uh, exciting to have you here on the show this week. I'd like to jump in and, and uh, get started and ask you a few questions. I, I, I've never really had a chance to formally meet you other than a week ago, we, we were on a panel together. And I would like to just ask you, uh, where are you from? And uh, who were some of your people that got you started in your schooling and back and all that? Take your time and let's have some fun with the show. It's your show. Go ahead, Ms. Sharon. Hello, Manny. Well, thank you so much. It's an honor for me to be here, truly. I don't get very many opportunities like this in the U.S., and so this is very special to me. I grew up here in the Washington, D.C. area, born and raised in Alexandria, Virginia. I've lived basically in this area all my life, the Washington, Maryland, and D.C. I studied at uh, Berklee College of Music many moons ago, but my biggest feature has been the road and actually doing clubs, small clubs. You remember the One Step Down and Charlie's Georgetown and right at the corner of Mr. Smith's um, in, um, on M Street in Northwest, where yeah. I learned repertoire with Pat Wolf. Or she was Pat Fitzgerald at that time. So I sat there for two years after leaving Berkeley, uh, sat there for two years just to learn repertoire. And so um, that's basically where it started. And Jam session after jam session, getting to know the musicians in D.C. Some are still with us and some have passed. Yes. It's been a wonderful journey. It's been a wonderful journey. Well, on that note, well, who were some of your influences? Uh, locally, uh, the great Keter Betts. I was just a kid when I met him. And of course, I was in awe of him because he had played with all of the greats. Uh, Number one, being one of my favorite singers, Ella Fitzgerald. Yeah. And I wanted to scat sing so bad. And Keita took me under his wing. And what he did was he just played his bass and told me to scat. Nothing else. Just listen to him. Yeah. And yeah. I remember him saying, my darling, you're only a half note away from the right note. <laughs> and, uh, and I was sweating and breathing. And then after about two or three months, I started to get the hang of it. And um, he became like a father to me. And he's, of course, my daughter's godfather, which she never knew him because he passed when uh, she was very, very young. Okay. Uh, other influences in this town were the great Shirley Horn, of course, and um, out of Baltimore, Ethel Ennis. Um, uh, there's so many people who have a stroke in my life in this city. Uh, I'd gotten very discouraged in the early years and I stopped singing for about 18 months and the great NASA Abadie called me one day and he says, where are you? And I was like, NASA, I give up. I'm going to get a regular job. And he was the one that told me to pick that microphone back up and start singing. And I'm so glad that he did. I am too. 
we have a community here that cares about each other. And when somebody's falling or somebody's tripping, we rush to try to help them. And then from that point on, um, it became uh, Paul Carr, uh, a great, great influence on my life. He wouldn't mm. let me quit either. And then comes along Chris Grasso, my piano and music director. We've been together for over 20 years now. And Fantastic. we are the music community here in D.C. Fantastic. Musicians fantastic. have been my friend, believe me. <laughs> That's fantastic. And uh, both of those musicians that you mentioned, uh, Nasser Aberday and Paul Carr, not only are they fantastic players, they're just wonderful people. Yes. You know, and I'm well, you, you know just as well as I do that you can be the best player, vocalist around, but if you're ugly on the inside... You're just ugly all the way around. And that, that's the way I view it. But to, yeah. you have mentioned two of the fantastic players that I really admire and look up to in mm -hmm. the D.C. area. Yeah. Uh, on that note, uh, moving right along, uh, let's let's take our time. And who are some of the artists that you have worked with and working with? Um, all the ones that I've mentioned here and... Mm -hmm. um, for the past, uh, the Steve Herberman, great guitar player, um, Chuck Underwood, another fantastic uh, guitar player, uh, Ted Baker, I was on his album called Duets. Of course, Lenny Robinson, um, yeah. we, uh, Zach Pride. Uh, these are my dream team guys. Of course, Chris Grasso. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. There's not too many... Uh, uh, Harry Appleman, uh, William Knowles, oh. you know William. Yes, uh, good, 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 good buddy of mine. Yeah, David Jernigan. I mean, it goes to Gamut. We're a small city here, but we're yes. a mighty one. I mean, we don't have the numbers that New York has, so we're not tripping all over each other. But yeah. we are, we're a tight knit community. And um, uh, my friend Maya Raymond. She um, has taken over the D.C. jazz vocalist uh, jam session that I started in 25 or actually 2013 now. And uh, when I started traveling extensively, I couldn't be home. So she's overtaken it. So we work together on that uh, when I'm home and I can get there and I'm not too tired. I head over to Henry's and see how my baby's doing. Yeah, this yeah. was something by a jazz vocalist for jazz vocalists and but anybody's invited so anybody i've had horn players to show up in the early days especially who wanted to sing as well as play their horn in a uh environment that was non-judgmental you know we would yeah, yeah. together and um i mean this list could go on i mean i'd be here until three o'clock talking about all the people that i work with in this area yeah that's fantastic you know, uh, this is not a loaded question. It's a fun question. What are some of the uh, funniest stories, things that you can share with us that that's taken place in your career? I know you can't share everything, but some of the some of the things that you can share that's uh, the, that that our guests would be interested in hearing. Some of the funniest things. Well, uh, well, I'm going to say this. At the time, it wasn't funny. <laughs> when I look back on it, it was it's funny. I remember yeah. one time this was down. This was years ago and I just started singing. And I used to go down to the one step down for their jam sessions that they used to have between I think it was like three o'clock and seven o'clock every uh, Saturday and Sunday. And you had to pay your little five dollars to come in and everything. And you'd sign your name to the list and everything. And I'd get there right before three, sign my little name to the list. And I noticed that the piano player there, he would never call me up. And um, so after a couple of weeks, you know, I questioned him and I said, you know, this is supposed to be a jam session. And I said, but every week I come in and sign up and some of these other vocalists come walk right in. They don't even sign the paper and they get up. And I said, I've paid my five dollars. Mm -hmm. And um, 
And then the bartender there, you know, you probably know all these people. I don't have to. Uh, he was a grouchy little man. And um, <laughs> he wanted me to, you know, pay the five dollars and do the two drink minimum. And um, I said, well, OK, then I should be able to sing. And then he got really feisty with me. And then um, maybe about a month later, because I'm tenacious like that, I almost said I'm not going back. Then the fourth time I went back, I just demanded. I said, you know, this is really unfair. I pay every day. And I said, mm-hmm. people walk right in off the street. And so finally, this very obstinate piano player let me perform. And um, he decided, I guess he decided I was good enough to perform at the jam session. So every once in a while, I, I mean, I don't even think I went back. I just wanted to do it just to see that, that, that I do it. Yeah. And um, and then after a few years, I'd start to build a reputation around town and work in four and five and six nights a week. And the same piano player that wouldn't let me sit in came to me and said, you know, I'm not working mm-hmm. a lot. So if you could give me a call and I told him and I said, well, let me see what you sound like first. And then I'll give you a call. Yeah. So I just batted that ball back. And, you know, it wasn't funny at the time. But now when I look back on it, it's funny because there were a lot of people who discarded me and Mm -hmm. treated me bad because I was very overweight and um, didn't dress that nice because I didn't have a lot of money. Um, But the people who saw me for what I was and they saw beyond what they saw physically. They were the ones that kept me working. Thank God for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what they say, you got to be careful how you treat people because sooner or later, Mm -hmm. it's going to come right back around. Right. It's coming right back to your lap. Mm -hmm. You know, I I definitely, I definitely understand what you're saying there. Mm -hmm. I, I can go along with that. I'm going to jump in right here and take a little break and uh, do an identification. Let the, let the people know that they're uh, listening to Speaking of Jazz with me, Manny Kellogg, and I'm your host. I'm bringing it to you live every, every week with different jazz vocalists, piano players, bass players, drummers. I'm bringing it to you live every week. There's no joke going on here because everybody on here is swinging hard. Mm-hmm. And I'd like to uh, thank uh, Daryl Craig Harris from Music Matters, Las Vegas, Nevada, who is our producer, and Nigel J. Farmer from Jazz Tribe News, and he's in Southwest France, who is producer and also the publisher. And they are making this show possible weekly, and I want to really give them a great round of applause and thank them for helping and bringing us out, bringing jazz to the forefront. With that being said, I'm gonna stop talking again. I, I got I got the lady that has the voice as a part of her soul, Miss Sharon Clark. I'm gonna bring it right back to your lap and uh, welcome you back. How you doing? You still with us? Yes, I'm still here. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, what are you currently uh, working on? Are you recording and your tours and shows? Can you kind of share that with our guests? Thank you. Go sure. ahead. Sure. Um, I just got back August 30th uh, from a two month European tour mm. and I have a little about I had about six weeks to chill out, maybe a little bit more. Well, about six weeks to chill out. And um, in October, I head back to France, Italy, Amsterdam, and I might just stop off in Denmark just, you know, just to visit some friends. But I'll be gone from October 18th to December 6th. And so um, I, I absolutely love Europe and I love France. And I had the first opportunity to go to Spain in um, July for the San Sebastian Jazz Festival. And that was phenomenal. And we will be back there next year in um, Spain during the month of July. Now, when you're when you're performing in Europe, are you carrying your dream team musicians with you or are you uh, picking up players in Europe? I have another dream team in uh I have one in Russia and I have one in uh, Scandinavia. So I have little pockets of musicians everywhere and they're all (laughs) under the label uh, dream team. Um, When I go back in October, I'll be with my uh, Swedish piano player and uh, the uh, group is French. 
And then when I go to Italy, of course, everybody's Italian. So I have I have musicians that are handpicked from everywhere I go. My Very dream good. and desire is to be able to bring my my A team from the U.S. And sometimes I'm able to, but sometimes I'm not. It's not uh, uh, financially, you know, sound. Yeah. That, that's that's uh, that's fantastic. She one of these days I want to be a part of the dream team. All right. <laughs> I want to, I, I, I know how to swing. I know you do. <laughs> Matter of fact, I, I put the S in swing. All <laughs> I right. Love to, I, I love to swing. I've been swinging since high school. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's, it's just such a, a pleasure to have you uh, on the show uh, this week. And I was I want to continue on here because I have a, some good questions to ask you, and I'm, I'm just glad that I was able to catch you and have you apart. What advice can you give to other up and coming young vocalists? Uh, what advice can you give them to stay on the right track? Yeah, um, make sure, number one, that, I mean, you might have to do it for a while to get a night, get a job where you can pay your bills. Amen. <laughs> And um, it won't be forever. Um, pay your taxes. Don't and report. I mean, you know, as hard as it might be when, you know, when I go to Europe, I bring back a bundle of U.S. dollars. Report it. Because when you get to be my age and it's almost time for you to go for your retirement, you're not going to have anything to draw on. Right. Um, don't let anybody tell you what you can and what you can't do. As a matter of fact, when they say you can't, that's when you try harder and say you can. Keep your eyes on your money. Mm-hmm. I can't um, get a contract. I'd say get a contract for anything over $500. Yes, I agree. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, more, more likely get a contract for anything over $500, $599. Because if you get anything, $600, you have to report that. Um, just be aware of who you're working with. Don't believe everything. Take everything with a grain of salt. Even when people give you compliments, take it with a grain of salt. If they give you uh, criticism, take it with a grain of salt and always consider your source. Who's complimenting you and who's criticizing you? Yes. And um, set your face like Flint. Hone your craft. Don't rely on uh, your looks or the dress that you have on. Really get in there and dig and find out what this music is all about, especially for young black women. We can take this thing back. We're doing it now because we've had a whole almost a whole 20 years of some fake stuff going around and people saying that this is jazz. It's not. I hear you. Stay true to yourself. Like I said, watch out for yourself because nobody's going to do it for you. Every everybody that uh, grins in your face and tell you you're sounding good is not your friend, right? And I have and, and those people who give you criticism and say that those are your friends. <laughs> yeah, because they're coming from the hip. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. What are uh, are you doing? Any, are you doing any recording? Well, hopefully, um, we're going to try to do a video. I mean, I've been seeing these jazz videos pop up. Yeah. And, I, you know, I grew up during the 80s when the videos were really popular and everything. We sit down and watch uh, MTV and all those videos. And so when we get to France, we're going to do uh, a video when we get there. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. And you're going to use the uh, dream team in France. The dream team in France and, and a few choice good looking men. <laughs> I Hey, I want to be there. <laughs> it's going to be fun. As a matter of fact, you probably just heard me mention that uh, our publishers in Southwest France. Yes. So let me know when you're over there or in that area, I will have him to come out if he's available. Okay. And introduce himself to you. Okay. Well, I'll email you my, um, I just got the schedule from, well, the bass player, um, he's one that's primarily booking this tour, uh, Nicola Sabato. And he's worked with Tamir Hendel, Hendel, Hendelman and he just recorded and released an album 
using the great Ray Brown's bass. He was in really? LA and they recorded. Yeah, it was so cool. And he said, and it was so funny because he said he woke up in the hotel and he had Ray Brown's bass there. And he woke up and just like in a cold sweat, like, that's Ray Brown's bass. Is it still there? You know, and it yeah, was yeah. really, it's really exciting. And he's the one that's uh, booking this tour for us. And so we're, I'll definitely send you the, um, the schedule and now hopefully we'll be somewhere. France is not, but so big, but we'll be somewhere near. Him. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Um, another question for you. This was coming from the hip. If you could have dinner with a well-known vocalist, dead or alive, who would it be? Sarah Vaughn. Sarah Vaughn. Fantastic. Yeah. I mean, it didn't take you long to answer that one either. I love her. Absolutely love her. And then Ella Fitzgerald will come by for dessert. Yes. And then we'd go out for cocktails with Nancy Wilson. <laughs> I she like the way you're doing that too. Yeah. <laughs> I love I love these ladies. I mean, yeah, yeah. these are the found. If you're not listening to these ladies, then you're yeah, I mean, I don't know where you're coming from. Right. Right. I hear you. you no, know, I'm, I'm not a vocalist, but I, I, I love them. I listen to the same ones. Mm-hmm. Carmen uh, McRae. Oh, I played behind her. Oh, man. I what mean, what an experience. Yeah. You've got to listen to these people. I mean, get in depth with these people. Yeah, Find yeah, out yeah. which way they were going to see if you can figure out which way. They, and then tailor it to fit who you are. Because mm-hmm. there's nothing new under the sun. Somebody's going to sound like somebody on some level. But if you're going to sound like somebody and you're singing jazz, I would rather it be some of these ladies than some of the stuff that's out here now. So-called. So-called. It's like a yeah. copy. It's like a, I don't, I don't know what it, I, I don't know what it is, but um, that ain't it as far as I'm concerned, but we gotta, but we have to, you know, start turning this thing around to what it really is. HR 57, the jazz classical music. Yes. Uh, this is what, it, this is the only music that's indigenous to here. And it came from people that look like me and you. Amen. Amen. And uh, people are so, so quick to claim stuff that they have nothing to do with. Mm -hmm. And you Mm -hmm. know what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we can share. We've done, I mean, I love uh, uh, some of, you know, the white counterparts in the 50s and 60s. Those broads can really sing. Mm -hmm. But um, like uh, June Christie, I loved her. Um, I'm not taking anything away from anybody, but we have to bring this thing full circle. Right, right. Fantastic. Well, I mean, well said, well put. Again, I'm going to jump in here and remind our guests that they're listening to uh, Speaking of Jazz with me, Manny Kellogg. I'm your host, and I'm coming to you every week with someone different, coming from the hip, answering and asking questions to these fantastic people, whether it be a jazz vocalist like our guest today, Ms. Sharon Clark, or a bassist or a drummer or a fantastic piano player. And this program and show is being made possible by Daryl Craig Harris, Music Matters, Las Vegas, Nevada, who is our producer. Also, Nigel J. Farmer, uh, Jazz Tribe News in Southwest France, who is our producer and also publisher. And again, I'd like to give them a great round of applause for making <laughs> making this show happen. We're going to move on here. I have uh, one more question for you, Sharon, if you're ready, if you're still there. I'm ready. All right. Coming from the hip, coming from the hip. What is jazz to you? I mean, that's like asking me, what is brushing my teeth to me? I mean, it is just a part of who I am. I, of course, grew up in the church, singing in the choir, but there was also running parallel to that uh, jazz music. Mm -hmm. Um, It's uh, a way for me to express myself through the footsteps of other people who come before me, people who've uh, had to endure some of the worst kind of discrimination, some of the worst kind of uh, treatment, sometimes not getting paid. I sing for them, too. Sure. 
the pain that they felt, the joy that they felt, it all comes up through us. The experiences of my younger years have made me the singer that I am, not the accolades, not the people telling me I was good, Mm -hmm. but the people who who basically rejected me. That, you know, there's something to be said about rejection. I have learned to like rejection now Mm. because it makes me go farther, harder. And to me, it's been a lifesaver, mental health. I mean, uh, it's opened many doors for me to meet people all over the world. And it also, it's something that I can pass on to my daughter, a generational type of thing. You mentioned your daughter. Is she in the arts as well? Oh, yeah. She's She's a wonderful singer. Really? And she's getting into the writing part, which I wish I could do. But yeah, she is. She's something else. Is she close by? Yeah, she's here with me now. Um, she's going back to school. She's going to attend uh, UDC in the uh, in January. But she decided to take a few months off to work because okay. she said she didn't want to be in thousands and thousands of dollars worth of debt mm-hmm. trying to pay for college. And I said, smart. You have you are you are teaching her the correct way. Mm-hmm. And my applause to you. Yeah. <laughs> Now you, you know, can't I, yourself. I was going to pay, you know, I was going to take the loans out for her. She said, no, mom, you'll be in, in over a hundred thousand dollars for this. And I can do this over here for a fraction of that. Yeah, and she's yeah. right because she's talented. And, and, and uh, I'm sure she's coming up under you as a, as a good, strong vocalist. Oh, singing, yeah. singing jazz as well. Well, she does some jazz, but she's leaning more towards the hip hop and all that kind of stuff. The only thing I asked her to do, I said, if you want to do that, don't use those derogatory words. And please, some no. of the things that she she's writing, she won't let me listen to it because she knows that I don't approve of it. Mm-hmm. And I tell her, like I tell all of these young people, you don't have to take your clothes off. You don't have to get vulgar if you have talent. I said, because if you have real talent, you can get up there in a bathrobe and people are going to listen to you. That's and I right. said, but if you don't have talent and you're just going out on the uh, the shock value, you're going to have to get more and more shocking. Yeah. To keep an audience. And then once you hit 30, it's not cute anymore. So cut down on the I said, listen to writers like Curtis Mayfield. That man, he was a poet. He put things, you you know what he was talking about, but it wasn't so vulgar and it wasn't out there. Right, right. Nobody was a a bitch or a hoe. You don't have to say that kind of stuff. And I said, if you take those clean words and put it to the same thing, I said, you're going to open up an audience where people my age, your age and younger can all listen to it. Right, right, right. Well, I I, I, I love what you're saying. And uh, one day I'd love to, meet your daughter as well, Mm -hmm. maybe even see her performing sometime. You know, I got two more questions for you. Okay. Uh, Keep them coming. uh, Okay. Would you like to share with our uh, listening and viewing audience uh, where you're performing? Are you doing anything locally? You got anything coming up? I mentioned you're getting ready to travel. Mm -hmm. Are you doing anything locally? Yes. um, On Saturday night, well, tomorrow night, it's a private thing, but on Saturday night, I've been at La Porta's restaurant on 1600 Duke Street, Alexandria, Virginia. Mm -hmm. This is my 25th year of performing there. Um, It's my home base and we perform from 7 until 11 p.m. There's no cover charge on the dining side, but dinner and drinks are required on that side. And I'll have with me this weekend, Mr. William Knowles, and um, yeah, you know William, (laughs) and Eric Harper on bass. Um, And then, uh, or Eric Glazer on bass, sorry. Um, Then after that, I have uh, a couple more places I'm performing. That's my Saturday night. That's covered Saturday night. And then up and coming October 6th through the 9th, I'm down in Hilton Head. But then I come back and then I'll be at. uh, Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. Georgia Browns. Oh, I'm doing Georgia Browns on Sunday morning with uh, 
a trio there. It's on uh, 15th Street Northwest. Great brunch, great jazz from 1030 to 330. And then um, my very last performance here until I uh, before I leave on the 17th, I'll be at the Tabard Inn with uh, Steve Herberman, and that's from 6 until 8.30. And I have a few more private things that I'm doing out at Northern Virginia Community College with their mm-hmm. um, uh, with uh, Shannon Gunn and their orchestra. It's a young group of people who are playing jazz. And so I sent my charts over and everything. And so we're going to see what's going to happen with that. And that's October the 12th. Sounds like that's going to be fun. And it sounds like uh, you have a pretty pretty jammed up schedule through the end of the year. Yeah. Yeah. I get well, back. You know, after two years being off, that's a, that's, a, that's a wonderful thing. Man, let me tell you. <laughs> You know, we all been we're all in that same boat, you know. Yeah. No last year, how good you are, none of us was none of us was I mean, last year uh Europe started to open up, but you had to have that PCR test and yes, you had to bring your COVID card everywhere and oh man, but we got through it. I mean, you know, and got through it healthy, you know. So that's, I'm always that's a wonderful that. thing, wonderful thing. Well, you know, again, it's it's we're winding down to the end of the show, and uh, it's it's been such an honor and a privilege to have you, uh, Lady Sharon. Uh, <laughs> Thank you to to be a guest on uh, Speaking of Jazz this week, and I really hope to have you again sometime. I know it's you from just what you're just telling me. The schedule is fantastic, yeah. and you're just jammed up. But uh, with that being said, I again I want to. Thank you for being here. You're just an adorable person. I, I again, I, I'm I'm ready to swing now. I, All right, I'll let you know. I, I can swing. Don't think I can't. Now. Oh, I know you can. <laughs> I know you can. <laughs> again, the show is being brought to you by uh, Daryl Craig Harris, who is our producer from Las Vegas, Nevada, and uh, Nigel J. Farmer, Jazz Tribe News in Southwest France, who is also producer and publisher for Speaking of Jazz with Manny Kellogg. Again, I'd like to thank all of you jazz listeners for tuning in and downloading our show and continue to tune in and download the show. With that being said, Ms. Sharon, thank you so much. You got you got a little scat for us before you leave? Oh, no, I ain't got, I need a second cup of coffee before that <laughs> or a shot of bourbon. <laughs> this early, it's early for me. <laughs> I hear you. Well, thank you so much for being my guest. And uh, I'm going to try to see you before you leave uh, somewhere. I'll sneak in and uh, just sit in the corner and enjoy yourself. Well, um, on Saturday, they're having the, uh, you know, down at Westminster Church. Yes. You can come by there. I, I start around one o'clock. I mean, you know, it's just something, you know, for somebody to do. Just to I think I'm playing there Saturday. Oh, good. Um, yeah, what I'm playing with uh, Greg Lamont and uh, West Sugar Biles. Okay. Uh, what time do you go on? I think three o'clock. Oh, three o'clock. I might stick around that long. Yeah. I have to get ready. Okay. Well, again, Queen. Ambassador. <laughs> Doctor. All right. Okay. Ron Clark. Thank you so much for taking time to be a part of being with us this week. Absolutely. And, uh, God bless your heart. I think you're a wonderful person. Thank Whatever you do, don't change for anybody. Now, Until we meet again, I always say, keep swinging. God bless your heart. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed the show and thank you for keeping jazz alive. Don't forget to follow us on our social media channels. All the links are in the podcast description.